This is how to create a kill all button inside of Roblox Studio. As you can see, I can kill all the other players inside of my game with the click of a button. In order to go ahead and get started with our kill all button inside of Roblox Studio, let's go right over here to our starter GUI and we're going to click on the plus icon to the right of that and we're going to insert a brand new screen GUI. It doesn't really matter what we name this, however, for a nice descriptive name, I'm going to name it to kill all, uh, well, you can just name kill all GUI, just like this. That's a good idea for it. Now inside of here, let's go ahead and add in a text button. I'm just going to drag this right over here to the right side and I'm going to change the properties of this button. So down here I'm going to change the font face over to Fridoka1 and I'm going to make sure the text is scaled and we're going to rename the text to kill all because this is going to be the dev product that we buy and it will actually kill all the players in the game except for the original player that bought it. Now I also want to go ahead and change the text color. I'm going to make it a lighter color and inside of this text button I'm going to add in something called a UI stroke. This UI stroke you'll notice will add a little black outline around our text. I'm going to change the thickness up to 5. Actually maybe 4 instead. No I like 5. Now let's also duplicate this UI stroke and we're going to change the apply stroke mode from contextual over to border and this will add a UI stroke around our button itself. And the text button, the background color, I'm going to make a nice bright red, like so. So now we have this nice cartoony kill all button right here, and it looks pretty good. And I think that's pretty much all we need to go ahead and do for designing our GUI. And keep in mind, you can just keep this however you'd like it. You can customize it, you can do whatever you'd like to with it. This is just personally how I'm going to be having my kill button. And inside of here, let's add in a local script inside of our kill all GUI just like this and this local script we're going to name to the kill local or kill client it doesn't really matter let's just name it kill client i just like to have descriptive names for all of my items and then up here you're just going to say services inside of a comment because i like to have different comments for my code just to keep it nice and organized nice and sorted and so up here we're going to start off with the player service which will be equal to game get service players and if you don't know what the player service is it's this player service right over here inside the explorer which is responsible for holding all the different players inside of your game underneath the player service in our script let's also go ahead and get something called marketplace service which is going to be equal to game get service marketplace service now marketplace service is the service responsible for all things having to do with purchases pretty much this is responsible for dev products, which are multiple time purchases, such as a kill all button. It's responsible for game passes, which are only one time purchases. And it's responsible for the premium stuff. It's responsible for anything that has to do with purchases, pretty much. Now let's go down here. Let's create another comment for our variables. And here we're going to go ahead and get the player from the player service. So this can be equal to players.localPlayer. And whenever we use a local script, this means it's going to be specific for the specific one client, which is the specific player that's actually playing the game. So we can say player is equal to players.localPlayer. And this local player is going to be the player that this local script is running inside of or running for. It's the individual client. And then let's also go ahead and get our kill button inside of a variable. So this will be equal to script.parent.killClient, not kill client, dot text button. There we are, I read the wrong name right there. And now here's where we need to go ahead and create our product ID. So let's go click on this home button right up here on the top. We're gonna go right over here to game settings. And if you don't already have your game saved, you're gonna have to do that. You simply just give your place a name. Mine is the main tutorial place. You don't have to worry about a description or any other thing like that for the moment. A name will do just fine. And then you click on save or save to Roblox. I forget the exact name of the button. But then once your game is actually saved, it should start looking like this. And then we want to go over to the monetization tab over here on the left. Roll down till you see all these different developer products. Now you might not have any already. I happen to have a few from some earlier tutorials and from earlier testing. I have a kill all dev product and a kick all dev product. But how you actually create a dev product is you find this developer product button and you just click on create. And this will create a brand new developer product for you. And you click on the three dots over on the right and you press edit. And here's where you can give it a name. So this will be kill all players, and then you can also give it a price. 
Now, I've never seen a kill all button actually go above 50 Robux. So I'm just going to put this at 49 Robux. And I think that's a pretty decent price. You can also just do 50 if you think that'd be better. It's up to you. I'm personally going to be doing 49, however. Now, once we have this developer product, we can simply press save and that will create our developer product. So then we go back to our game settings, the monetization tab, and then we find our kill all players dev product. Click on the three dots and then click on copy ID to clipboard. From there, we can press cancel, go down underneath here and we can say local product ID will be equal to the product ID that we just copied. And that's all we need to do for our dev product. Now let's go down here, we're going to create another comment for our functions. And we're going to say kill button dot activated. We're going to connect a function, parentheses, on the outside. And we're going to say marketplace service prompt product purchase, which means we're going to prompt the purchase of this actual product, which is our kill all players dev product, to the player whenever we actually go ahead and click on our kill button. So we're going to take our player as the player they want to go ahead and prompt the purchase to. And then we're also going to take the product ID of the product they want to sell. Now, this is all we need to do for our local script. So if we click on play real quick, then you will see that if we click on our kill all button right here, it will actually go ahead and prompt us to buy our kill all players item. Let's go ahead and buy this. But you'll notice that nothing will actually happen when we do that. Now, here's where we get to go ahead and fix that. So that's all we need to do for our client script right here. So we can actually close this out for now. And inside of server script service, let's click on the plus icon and insert a brand new script. And in fact, let's open up our kill client right here. And we can just copy these top three lines of code right here. Our services, players, and marketplace service variables. And let's just go right up here and paste them inside of our server script. From there, inside of our variables, let's create our comment. Once again, and we're going to say our local product ID will be equal to, and we should actually go back to our kill client and copy this ID real quick, and then we can paste it inside of our server script. So now we have our product ID here, and then let's go down and create our functions comment, just like this. And we're going to create a new local function, and this is going to be called handle kill product with parentheses and this is going to take the buying player now the buying player this is going to be the player that actually is buying the kill all product now inside of this function we're going to create a loop so we're going to say four underscore comma player in in pairs and this is going to be players colon get players which will return an array of all the different players inside of the game and we're going to do this so if the player does not equal to the buying player and the player dot character, which means that the player's character exists, then we're going to say local humanoid will be equal to player dot character colon find first child of class quotation marks humanoid. So that'll find the humanoid inside the character, which if you don't know, all characters have a humanoid inside of them. It's pretty much the brain of a human, which is the humanoid to a character. And we're going to check if the humanoid exists. So if we found a humanoid, then we're going to change the humanoid's health to zero. So humanoid.health will be equal to zero. And what this if player does not equal to bind player means that it's just going to make sure that if the player that we are looping through at the moment is not the person that actually bought the product, then we aren't going to go ahead and kill them, but we're going to kill the other players instead. Now we need to go down here. And we need to create a function to actually go ahead and process the payment that they bought. So we're going to create a new local function. So local function, and this will be process receipt. And we're going to put parentheses on here, and this is going to take something called receipt info. Now, if you don't know what receipt info is, it's pretty much something that Roblox gives us whenever a player buys something that allows us to take certain information about whatever they bought so we can actually use it to give the player what they bought. Now let's go ahead and say local receipt product ID will be equal to receipt info dot product ID. The product ID of the receipt info is going to be whatever the product ID was that was purchased. We're also going to say the local buying player will be equal to players get player by user ID and this will be receipt info dot player 
ID. Receipt info will also take the player ID of the player that actually purchased it, so that we can actually get the player from it and do things with that player. So for them, we're going to check if not buying player, then we're going to return enum dot product purchase decision dot not processed yet, which means that it, the player pretty much backed out of the purchase, which means we're not going to process it just yet, and we're going to return there and stop our function. However, if the receipt product ID is equal equal to our product ID right up here, which means it was equal to our kill all product, then we're going to do handle kill product and we're going to take the bind player as the parameter right there and that will make sure that it actually kills all the other players then at the end here we're just going to say return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted because we got to the end of our script and everything's working perfectly so we can actually return that it was actually purchased and everything will work out just fine now we just need to simply call this function so let's go drop down a few lines and we're going to say marketplace service dot process receipt and this will be equal to process receipt which is our function right up here and this is perfect so whenever our client gets prompted to buy the product and they actually go ahead and purchase it then over here when they actually purchase it we're going to process the receipt which is pretty much we're making sure that they actually did purchase it and if they did we're going to do the thing that we said we would do which would kill all the players and that's what we're doing right up here so the best way to do this is if we click on the test tab and then create a local server with at least two different players and press start we can actually test out our kill all button so you'll see here that there are two of us currently inside of the game and if i go ahead and buy this kill all button right here i'll back away so you can see it and all the other players inside of my game actually go ahead and die whenever I bought that. And looking at it from the other player's view, if I buy this kill all from here, you can see that that player dies instead. So as you can see, this is working perfectly fine. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot from it, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope I'll see you in the next tutorial. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Goodbye.